Howdy folks, so before we continue on with the game, like the actual main plot, I guess you could call it, of the game, we're gonna head east of Cinnabar Island to the Seafoam Islands. Why? Well, we need to find something pretty kick-ass there. Fortunately, it's not going to take very long at all. Before you set out, I strongly recommend you bring... Well, you're gonna have to have a Pokémon that knows Surf, obviously. I recommend bringing a Pokémon that knows Strength, because, well, you need to. And then I also recommend bringing an Escape Rope. Or a Pokémon that knows Dig, I'm not... And maybe Teleport, I can't remember specifically if Teleport will work or not. Anywho, we're already at the Seafoam Islands. This place is full of water-type Pokémon, so if you don't have a water-type Pokémon yet, I very, 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 very strongly recommend that you get one. If you're also having trouble with Blaine and you need a water Pokémon, surf on over to here, catch yourself a water Pokémon, and just kick his ass, because he's a very easy gym leader. Anywho, we're going to head on over this way. I don't com much like the Saffron City Department building. I don't completely remember my way around here, but fortunately this place is actually relatively big. Er, <laughs> is not relatively big. It's actually quite small. <laughs> huh. But yeah, you're gonna have to have Surf to even just get here, but you're also gonna need Strength because there is a little bit of a boulder puzzle. A little bit. Danger. Fast Current. Really? There's a fast current? Huh. Craziness. So, we're gonna head over to the left and make our way down. I said down. Down the ladder. Uh, but yeah, there are a lot of water Pokemon here, such as Horsey. You can find Horsey in here, just walking around. You can find Seal in here, which is a very kick-ass water-slash-ice-type Pokemon. Um, uh, you can find Shelter in here, which evolves also into Cloyster, which has a very questionable appearance, but we'll see it later. <laughs> anyway, this is the Boulder Puzzle, I guess you could call it. It's actually not very hard. It's just if you come to this if you come to this cave without a Pokemon that has strength, it gets very annoying when you get to here because you do have to do this boulder puzzle in order to get to what it is that we're here to get. Like I said though, it's relatively easy. I wouldn't worry about it. Huh. Something that annoys me with the boulder puzzles in this game is that you have to actually select strength from the move menu, from the Pokemon status menu. But anyway, after pushing the boulders into the holes, come up here and you will find the second legendary bird Pokemon. Once again, make sure you save before doing anything. Also, uh, this is the hardest one to catch because it's the one that hits the hardest just because of the moves it knows when you battle it to try and catch it. But it is motherfucking Articuno. I love Articuno. It is my favorite of the three legendary bird Pokemon. And what's more, it is the only one that you can get a little bit of a glimpse of before you actually get to this cave. What I mean is, is that I was talking at the time, but in one of the parts, you could go up and look through binoculars and you will see Articuno. Anywho, though, as you can see, it knows Ice Beam. Which, if you'll recall from War Turtle, is the best ice move in the game. It hits really fucking hard. It is a legendary Pokemon, after all. It's It's got some of the highest stats in the game. It also has Peck, which is... Eh, it's so-so. Ice Beam's really what's gonna fuck you over. Uh, my strategy, if you're trying to catch him at a lower level like I am... Sand attack. Use sand attack. Spam it as much as you can. That way his moves won't hit as often. And then I recommend paralysis over sleep. And then just do your best to whittle its HP down. It's tough, but you can do it. Fortunately, Electabuzz is a freaking saint for this... For, <laughs> for catching Articuno here. Huh. 
because Articuno is ice slash flying type, if I haven't mentioned that quite yet, but that means that it's weak against lightning moves, which makes it relatively easy to, you know, weaken. Whereas Zapdos was not actually weak against lightning moves, it was only normal against them, they only did normal damage, so it wasn't as effective. But yeah, do your best to weaken it, try to get it paralyzed if you can, and just start spamming the Ultra Balls. And, uh, maybe bring, make sure you have some healing items with you, because its Ice Beam hurts really fucking bad. And I mean really fucking bad. Uh, but yeah, I, I mentioned this, I believe, during the Zapdos catching period, but I really hate the fact that the balls that you throw, they just flat out miss sometimes. I hate that. That's so fucking annoying. Why would they program it that way, you know? But whatever. It knocks out Electabuzz, and so I believe I send out Golbat. <laughs> I, I, I didn't expect that. I was expecting Wartortle. But anyway, we're just gonna keep throwing the balls. Fortunately, this one hits, and one, two, three, huzzah! We caught Articuno, the second legendary bird Pokemon. Man, my favorite of the three legendary birds. It also has a very sad description. It appears before people who are doomed and lost, or lost and doomed people that are lost in icy mountains. That's creepy. But to get back, you don't need the escape rope, if I remember correctly, but it just speeds everything up, because it takes you straight back to Cinnabar Island. Or Fuchsia City, if you chose to take the other way here. Anyway, though, let's go ahead and take a little look at Articuno. Huh? Huh? What do you say? I can tell you're excited, folks. I can tell. Because, you know, I, I can see you through YouTube however many days after I've actually recorded this. <laughs> Yeah, I can actually tell that you guys are all excited to see Articuno. But yeah, Articuno is a very, a very fantastic Pokemon. I like it the most of the three legendary birds. But anyway, we, after putting it back, where do we go now? Well, yeah, we actually have to go to Viridian City. You may not remember because it's been so long since uh, we actually were at this point in the game. But there is, in fact, a gym here. There is a gym that we couldn't get into because it was locked. That is the final gym we have to go to, if you haven't put, pieced it together yet. I also uh, teach Flareon and Aerodactyl some TMs. They're, I'm going to teach Aerodactyl Double Edge because it doesn't have anything, anything else that's really worthwhile. And I'm going to teach Double Team to fucking... Larion and oh my god, it, it those two moves generate such a fantastic, fantastic strategy for Flareon. Believe me, we're gonna see it, and it, it is super fucking kick ass. I love it. Huh. And then we're gonna teach Thunder Wave to Electabuzz, if I'm not mistaken. Why? Well, because I'm lazy. I don't want to wait for Electabuzz to learn Thunder Wave, and it's useful. So yeah, we're going to get rid of Screech, I believe, and ba-boom! We now know Thunder Wave. We have the ability to paralyze Pokemon at will. Huzzah! And then I tried to teach Aerodactyl to move Rock Slide, but uh, it can't learn it. And I tried to teach it Earthquake, but it can't learn it. Yeah, that sucks. But, oh well. We're now going to make our way to the gym. And what kind of gym is it? I bet you're all anxious to see. I mean, this is like the quickest we've jumped from one gym to another, right? Right? Well, it's... It's tough. Kind of. Huh. Viridian Gym... Viridian Gym's leader returned. Yo, champion making! Even I don't know the Viridian leader's identity. This will be the toughest blah blah blah. No, it won't. Believe me. But he says he doesn't know the identity, but look. We just read right there. It's Don Giovanni. I, I know that seems like a spoiler, but it's right there on the statue. The guy couldn't look to the right of him. Anyway, your power... <laughs> oh, good lord. I am just fucking up terrible, aren't I? <laughs> but whatever. We get to see a tamer. I think this is the first time we've seen a tamer. They also have a whip. 
I am noticing a very big trend with whips in this game. Good lord. <laughs> but we're up against an Arbok. A very... Well, we've seen it before. I like Arbok quite a bit. There have been a lot of snake... Um, snake Pokemon over the years, but Arbok is always going to stand up above the others, in my opinion. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because it's a Cobra. But it's also a Poison-type Pokemon, which means Drowse is going to kick its ass. <laughs> huh. Huzzah! Level 38! Way to go, Drowsy! Way to go, Drowsy! What the hell's going on here? <laughs> but now he sent out a Tauros. I've mentioned this before, but I actually have a bit of an affinity with Tauros, because I'm a Taurus. Like, 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 that's my astrological sign. I'm a Taurus. In case you were curious. But I've always had a fondness of Tauros. It's also a pretty kick-ass Pokemon, so it's... It's pretty awesome. You can catch it in the Safari Zone. It doesn't show up very often, but... It's pretty fantastic. It's a normal-type Pokemon, which is... Eh. But it's... It's decent. I'd recommend Tauros. As you can see, it knocked out Electabuzz. Holy shit. <laughs> Was not expecting that. Well, I guess it's our chance to finally see Aerodactyl in action. So, here's Double Edge. Is it as amazing as you thought it would be? <laughs> a big problem a big problem with Aerodactyl and the other fossil Pokemon you get as well is the fact that you get them so late in the game if you're going by gym number. What I mean is, you get them in Cinnabar Island, on Cinnabar Island, which if you're going just in order of which gym is which, then you're not going to get to it until after Saffron City. Drowsy evolved into Hypno! Huh, fucking Zah! I guess I can't say damn you, Drowsy, anymore, but huzzah! We now have a Hypno who is kick motherfucking ass. But anyway, back to what I was saying before. You don't get these... You don't get Aerodactyl or Kabuto or Omanyte until so late in the game, and then, you know, unless you want to sit there and actually train them, you're probably not going to get a whole lot of use out of them. It, it's too bad, but that's just the way it is. <laughs> and apparently karate is the ultimate form of martial arts. Uh, I've made this joke several times throughout this LP, but everybody loves kung fu fighting! Wah! <laughs> uh, I don't remember the rest. But whatever. It's a machoke, so... We know Machoke's deal. It looks stupid, and it is technically stupid. It's... It's all muscle. It's got no intelligence. If it tried to do math, and it was asked what 1 plus 1 is, it would not know that the answer is actually 3.5. No, it would punch the chalkboard. Anywho, that's it. Really easy. This gym... They say this is the toughest gym yet, but it's really fucking easy. I mean, it's it's really fucking easy. A lot of normal, or er, not normal, ground type Pokemon do get used, but at the same time, a lot of not ground type Pokemon get used as well. So, what the guy said at the beginning is kinda wrong, but whatever. Look, even the cool trainers have whips. But we get to see Nidorino again. Huzzah! Nidorino is, at this point, a subpar Pokemon. It only a stage one. What I mean it is the first form or the first evolution of the male Nidoran, so it's not going to be as good as the final the final form of the male Nidoran, so you know, it, it's okay. But speaking of the final form of the male Nidoran, we get to see Nidoking. I bet everyone who played this game for the first fucking time and caught a male Nidoran and then evolved it to Nidorino and then finally evolved it into Nidoking never fucking expected it to turn into that. <laughs> Nidoking is a ground slash poison type Pokemon, meaning it is weak against water. Just like the last gym, water kicks so much ass at this gym. I, I don't know what to say, just water type is so kick ass for later in the game. This is also the only gym that has an item just laying in it. I, I find that peculiar. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and battle this. What is it? Tamer? Nope, cool tra Oh, excuse me. Holy bejeebus. Cool trainer. Who sent out a Rhyhorn? 
Uh, do I even need to say it? I, I mean, it's rock slash ground. It's the easiest type combination in the game to take out. Because it, it receives a four times weakness against grass type moves. It also receives a four time weak a four times weakness to water type moves. It's so fucking easy to take out that. Do I really need to say it? And you know, as old as, as always, War Turtle's trying to evolve, but you know, what? Whoa, whoa, wait a minute, it's going longer than normal. What? It evolved into Blastoise, huh, motherfucking za? <laughs> Blastoise is actually kind of a ridiculous-looking Pokemon, but I love it. It's a giant turtle that has two cannons coming out of it. Ah. <sighs> Anywho, we're going to go ahead and take a little look at Blastoise's stats, and you can't surf on him, apparently, indoors. Anyway, we'll see Blastoise in action in Part 38.